Hello guys, so this is the Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Vanguard video. So today we have gotten an absolute boatload of information on the roads leading up to Season 1. So Season 1 for Vanguard is going to be starting on December the 2nd slash December the 3rd, which is just under a month after release since the game is literally releasing in 8 days time from now on the 5th of November. And considering the fact that we are just 8 days away from launch, we still have no word on what the PlayStation exclusive content is going to be. A lot of people are worrying that it could potentially be round-based versions of the Dirt and Fang maps, such as Red Star and Shino Numa, potentially being playable as their own individual locations. We have no idea what this exclusive content is going to be, but we know that it's going to be exclusive until November of 2022. There are some people saying that because we are so close from launch and they've not announced what this exclusive content is, is that maybe there is no exclusive content and I don't really understand how that could be the case considering they've already put out a statement stating that there is exclusive content. Now there are going to be exclusive bonus loadout options for PlayStation users and of course there'll be the different bundles and skins exclusive for PlayStation users like we got in Cold War and Modern Warfare but I don't think that's really what they are on about. So we'll just have to wait and see what that content is but in terms of a season one there are going to be three new multiplayer maps coming. We don't know exactly what they are just yet. In addition, there's going to be three new operators and there's going to be some additional zombies content that includes things like additional covenants, which is basically this new system where you collect a heart after doing the objectives on Dirt and Fang. And then you input this heart into an obelisk, which gives you different bonus rewards and upgrades. And I talked about that more in my last Vanguard Zombies video. In season one, there's also also going to be a new objective coming as well as fresh challenges, new weapons and more. So yes, just like we suspected, it does seem like post launch, Dirt and Fang is going to be getting additional objectives because on launch there are just three objectives and three different portal maps with Stalingrad Red Star being the main central hub where the Pack-a-Punch is and other machines and the crafting table etc. So yeah, in season one for Call of Duty Vanguard there is not another Zombies map coming. We are getting Dirt and Fang on launch, which is basically like this round-based onslaught outbreak hybrid where you start on Stalingrad. There are three different portals that take you to three different maps. Shino Numa Hotel Royale in Paris, as well as the Normandy farmlands. And you progress the rounds by completing these objectives on each of the three different maps, which will make the world harder, just like when you complete the objectives in Outbreak. And as you complete these objectives, the maps will open up more and the main central hub Stalingrad will start to expand allowing you access to additional perk machines and other items. And I've seen some people saying that there is not going to be an easter egg on Dirt and Fang. I don't know where people are getting this information from. Of course there's still going to be a main quest on this map. Just because it's not a round based map doesn't mean there's not going to be a main quest. So I'm really excited to see what the main quest is on this map and how it sort of intertwines with the different objectives and the fact that you can teleport from map to map it's going to make it so that the easter egg could be quite interesting because it's going to be quite different. The Outbreak easter eggs were really awesome and I think they could do some fun gameplay things considering the fact that this mode is going to be quite different to what we are used to. But yeah, no new map in Season 1 unfortunately. I know there were prior rumours saying that there would be a round based map in Season 1 but the Modern Warfare 2 Ghost backtracked on that rumour saying that he believes that this is no longer the case and honestly I really don't think there are any round based maps coming, at least fully fledged round base maps, even in the DLC seasons. Maybe they're going to release bonus round base maps, like I was saying they could potentially just release Shino Numa as its own map, considering the fact that it already exists in Dirt and Fang, but in terms of a fully fledged map, I don't think we're going to be getting round base maps in the DLC seasons. I feel like all of the maps are potentially going to be new modes. Maybe they're going to be objective style modes, maybe they're going to be different variations, where they're not all identical to Dirt and Fang's format, where you start start in a main central hub and have different portals taking you to other maps, but maybe each of the maps in Vanguard seasons could potentially just be new modes we haven't seen before that are somewhat similar, but a bit different to each other. Right now we have no confirmation on round based maps coming in the DLC, so I just want to make it very clear that because we don't have confirmation, don't be expecting any round based maps in the DLC. They might be coming, maybe, but considering the fact that there's no official information, we just have leaks and rumours, I wouldn't get your hypes up just yet. And really, I don't 
don't mind not seeing round based maps. This is Treks off year. They're not even supposed to be making zombies for this game, really. And I would like them to experiment with new modes to see what the community likes and what sticks because then it'll allow them to make for a better zombies experience in the sequel to Black Ops Cold War, Treks next game in 2023. Where I'd assume there's probably round based maps, at least in that game, where they could have a good mixture of outbreak styled modes but also round based maps, but the modes are more refined because they've taken feedback from Vanguard zombies. In addition to us seeing a new objective and more covenants coming in season one for zombies, apparently there's going to be DLC score streaks for zombies too. Now, I said in my prior video that there's no score streaks in zombies this year, unlike a Black Ops Cold War zombies, and the reason being is because they showed the crafting table within the gameplay preview of Dirt and Fang, and now the armor is purchasable from the crafting table instead of an armor station, and you can get lethal and tactical grenades too, but you can no longer buy score streaks from the crafting table, so I was thinking that there's no score streaks in this mode, but potentially maybe the way that you get score streaks now is just via the mystery box, and there's no longer war buys, there's just the mystery box, or via the random loot crates on the map, or potentially you may get them from the covenants, or maybe there's going to be no score streaks on launch, but they're going to be added in season one. Either way, it seems like score streaks in Vanguard Zombies are going to be less overpowered than in Cold War, because you could literally just buy them with salvage, pretty much having an infinite amount of score streaks, and some of which, like the chopper gunner, basically made you invincible when you called it in, so it was basically like a second chance if you were ever trapped by the zombies, and just being easily able to buy them with salvage just made it way too easy. So maybe in Vanguard Zombies, they've kind of nerfed score streaks a lot, where you're only going to be able to get them from the mystery box, or the loot crates, or potentially the covenants. But yeah, we don't know exactly how score streaks are going to be implemented in this mode, we're just speculating right now. So yeah, I'm expecting the first DLC map for Vanguard Zombies probably to be in January, potentially early February, which is around the time we saw Firebase Z this year too, so it isn't really much different. The only time we've ever seen a Zombies map really early was Dead of the Night, that literally had zero marketing, so honestly, it might be a little bit better if there is a bit of a wait so that Treyarch have more time to perfect the map, but as I was saying, I just have a feeling like it's not going to be round based, and it potentially might be played on multiplayer maps still. Maybe all of the maps in Vanguard Zombies are going to be multiplayer maps slash campaign level hybrids, because the Normandy farm section of Dirt and Fang is from the campaign, so basically, they've taken two multiplayer maps, Red Star and Hotel Royale in Paris, and then they've taken Shinonuma, a classic zombies map, and they've taken the section from the campaign, from the Normandy campaign mission, and they've put them together as one map that you can teleport between. And maybe all of the DLC maps are going to be like that, so we might see more classic remakes in the DLC, such as Nacked Runtoten, Verrocked, Durries, considering the fact that we've seen Shinonuma. I suspect in the DLC they may be adding more locations to Dirt and Fang as well, more maps that you can teleport to in the portals. Maybe with the new objective it will also allow for another map. Oh, and in terms of the perks in Vanguard Zombies, as you guys know, five different perks were seen in the trailer, and there was a leaked achievement about there being five different perks. So we have these perk fountains now, and we saw one that appears to be stamina up, just allowing you to run faster. We saw one that looks like speed caller, allowing you to reload faster. There is one that is something to do with biting. There is one that is something to do with electric, maybe something like electric cherry. We then have this red perk, and we're not sure what this is, but this might be Juggernog. I noticed when I was was watching back on my old video where I talked about the perks, you can see at the last second there appears to be an outline of a heart, suggesting that this could have something to do with health. So this might be Juggernog. It might have a new name though. But yeah, the perks are just given to us by the old ones, I believe. Since Vanguard Zombies is set before Zykov managed to mend the broken pieces of the perk machines that were in the dark ether. And then he helped us out in Cold War Zombies when he became the Forsaken with the perk machines and the power up because he wanted us to be tricked into allowing him to escape. Some big news in terms of zombies camos. There's going to be a red Dark Ether camo as the final mastery camo in Vanguard Zombies. So it's pretty much the same camo as in Cold War, but it's just red now because this is a prequel to Cold War Zombies. So the Dark Ether was red before and more hell-like when the old ones controlled the Dark Ether before Zykov consumed them and became the ruler of the Dark Ether, turning it oceanic and blue slash purple with the Dark Ether jellyfish in the sky. So it's pretty much the same camo, but red. Now, I won't be able to show the image on screen due to copyright reasons, but I will leave a link to it down in this video's description. On screen right now, I'm 
may have just color altered the Dark Aether camo in Cold War Zombies to make it red. So this isn't the actual camo you'll have in Vanguard Zombies, but it's going to be very, very similar. I'm not sure what the other camos are going to be, but yeah, it looks pretty cool and fits the red demonic theme of Vanguard Zombies. Before I get into the rest of the multiplayer and Warzone information, I want to let you guys know that this video has been kindly sponsored by Game Round that you can check out via the link in this video's description. Game Round is an exclusive free community driven platform where games are picked every week to be supported by you. They are dedicated to helping game developers gather feedback, improve and polish their games to provide the ultimate gaming experience. You can check them out using the link in this video's description. Once there, create an account and head to the testing tab. There is a diverse plethora of games to choose from. When you see one you like, click play and you will be prompted to install the game round launcher. Download it and extract the file with WinRAR to begin the install. Some games won't launch via the game round launcher and they will simply give you a Steam key to input. From the launcher, you'll be able to download and install the game. After you've played it for a decent amount of time, you are then able to review it by filling out a quick survey about your experience. Reviews can be made in any language you desire. Because you are helping out the developers in playtesting and improving their games, they want to reward you via the G points currency. As you playtest, survey and participate in events, you'll be able to accumulate more points. You can then use these points to purchase gaming gear and other items such as headphones, controllers and more. It's the perfect system. Play brand new games, help them out and in return you will be rewarded. What's more is that you can record and share gameplay clips on the platform to highlight your best moments. So like I said earlier, you can check out Game Rounds for free using the link in this video's description to go ahead and earn some rewards and play some free games today. Anyways, that's pretty much all of the zombies content that we know is coming in Season 1. Let's talk about the other stuff. So, there is pre-Season 1. So, basically, I think that the Battle Pass and the ranking and stuff is going to combine with Black Ops Cold War. So, you'll be able to complete the Season 6 Battle Pass for Black Ops Cold War by playing Vanguard and Warzone and Modern Warfare, etc. Whilst we were waiting for Vanguard Season 1 to start, because I believe Season 6 Reloaded is basically a day before Vanguard launches on the 4th of November. Not sure if there's going to be any bonus content there though because it's so close to Vanguard's release But people have been speculating there might be remakes coming surprise remakes right at the last second of Black Ops Cold War I'm not entirely convinced though We'll just have to wait and see but whilst we are waiting for season one to begin We are going to be getting shipment to Vanguard so shipment is returning on November the 7th and obviously newcomers and veterans will love this It's a chaotic playground for destruction a small little map and it seems like this version of shipment is going to be a lot better better than the version we saw in Modern Warfare since the shipment placements are a lot better and yeah it's set on the beach and we have the palm trees and the mountains in the background it just looks absolutely beautiful I can't wait to play shipments again but yeah that's November the 17th and I just thought I would mention really quickly that if you check out the link in this video's description you can go ahead and get yourself some blue light protection glasses from felixgray.com they help relieve symptoms of digital eye strain and support your well-being since obviously we are the first generation that constantly looks at screens so you need to protect your eyesight with season one beginning on December the 2nd for Vanguard so all of the Vanguard content is going to be available on December the 2nd but season one for Warzone is going to be a day later on December the 3rd which I guess is good it kind of spaces up the content a little bit and we are going to be seeing the brand new Warzone map Caldera so we have the name for it now because before we didn't know what it was called and uh, this is just an island map set in the Pacific and it's absolutely beautiful. We've gotten some new shots of it. It looks gorgeous. Verdansk was a pretty mundane looking map and this is the complete opposite. It has bright colours, it's very vibrant and it's just so awesome and I love the tropical aesthetic. This map is probably going to be way, way, way better than Verdansk. And in addition to this new map, we're going to be seeing the new Ricochet anti-cheat system for PC users so there's less cheaters in the game. The thing is though, you you are going to be able to play the new map early on December the 2nd if you own Vanguard. So obviously Warzone is free to play. So if you are a free to play user, you will get access to the new Pacific map on December the 3rd. If you own Vanguard, you get to play it a day early, 24 hours early. And that's just a way for Activision to entice Warzone free to play players to buy the full game Vanguard, which is a very smart decision. But yeah, this new map looks absolutely beautiful. So, so crisp with the different streams.
streams and rivers and the little huts. It even has a volcano on it. I can't wait to play this map and I feel like it's going to be cluttered with Easter eggs. So if there are any Easter eggs, I will be sure to cover them here on the channel, of course. But yeah, it's filled with lush forests and rocky crags. It has white sand beaches and mysterious ruins and there's a dormant volcano that towers over the 200 plus points of interest. On screen right now, you can see all of the points of interest. By the way, these were leaked literally ages ago. And there's going to be new dogfighter planes that we're going to be able to fight in. And all of the modern warfare, Cold War and Vanguard content will be usable in Warzone still. So yeah, all of the operators, weapons, calling cards, etc. will carry over. So yeah, there's a Pacific playlist called Vanguard Royale available to all players. Take to the skies on maneuver AA guns to break up epic aerial battles in Vanguard Royale featuring a streamlined loadout and weapon pool. So there are going to be turrets around the map that I think are going to be useful to take out the planes. This map really does seem so fun. There's going to be, as we're saying, multiple new vehicles, including biplanes and AA trucks. The Pacific is home to dogfighting, aerial battles in the azure skies above the majestic isle. Think of a precision airstrike where you are in the cockpit, ready to rain down fire on a squad or defend yours from an enemy pilot. That, in its most basic terms, is what you can imagine aerial combat is like in the Pacific. Expect a new machine gun fighter aircraft to add another element of strategy and firepower to your squad's winning Warzone Pacific tactics. These are also just part of a brand new set of vehicles for these Vanguard focus modes. Another is an anti-air AA truck that provides a solid solution to grounding planes other than launchers, LMG stationary AA turrets or take into the skies yourself. So Caldera Plunder will be coming later in Season 1. So Plunder is not going to be there when the new map drops. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer. So for those Plunder players, you'll just have to wait a little bit. In these modes, only Vanguard weaponry can be used in loadouts, not Cold War or Modern Warfare. This limit streamlines the meta, granting new players an opportunity to jump in without facing fully maxed out loadouts right at launch. It also grants room for experimentation with these new weapons, giving the most hardcore community meta profits a place to focus on the future for a winning loadout. In addition to this, Rebirth Island is still going to be present. So yeah, it's not going away. A lot of people will be happy about that. Personally, I preferred Rebirth Island to Verdansk since it's a lot smaller, more fast paced and immediate action. So all of the playlists we have are Vanguard Royale, just to clarify, with World War II weapons only and dogfighting. We have Caldera Battle Royale, which is all weapons, Vanguard, Cold War and Modern Warfare and more. We have Caldera Plunder later in season one. And finally, we have Rebirth Island, with all items. So in terms of the season one bar pass, there's going to be future weapons coming, weapon blueprints, operator skins, the usual stuff that will become available during the season via challenges and the store via bundles. Now here is some awesome news for those grinders. There appears to be a gold operator's outfit slash skin system similar to what we had for the specialists in Black Ops 3's multiplayer. So in Call of Duty's blog post, it reads progression, a love letter to elite players with new XP systems and tons of challenges. Gold camo grinders, prestige warriors, all leaders of the currently frozen regiment system, Vanguard multiplayer and zombies, as well as Warzone following season one is here to reward you for personal progress. The best of the best can expect to be decked out in gold and then some from their operator to their fully loaded 10 attachment weapon. For those who play the game day one, day in, day out, this is a taste of the experience you can gain from the challenges that Sledgehammer Games put together. So we have the ranking experience with XP in brackets. So we have 55 enlisted ranks to unlock all loadout items and the seasonal prestige system returns. We have weapon progression. So weapon XP unlocks attachments and camo challenges. Use attachments across all modes and unlock two sets of striking cosmetic camouflage rewards. One through zombies and another through multiplayer or war zone. We have a new operator XP leveling and rewards. So all 12 operators at launch and others to come can be leveled up to unlock new skins including special gold attire, weapon XP for specific weapons, and more. You can use their favorite weapon to earn bonus weapon and operator XP. So yeah, you can grind out gold skins for your operators. Well, there's 12 at launch, but there's going to be three additional operators coming in season one, as I mentioned earlier. On screen right now, you can see all of the 12 operators that will be available on launch. On launch, there are going to be 16 core multiplayer maps, which are the Battle of Berlin, Bocage, Castle, which is a remake from World of War, Das House, Decoy, Demiansk, Desert Siege, Dome, which is another remaster from World of War, Eagle's Nest, Gavutu, Hotel Royale,
Hotel in Paris, Numa Numa, Oasis, Red Star in Stalingrad, Sub Pens, and Tuscan. So yeah, that's a bunch of maps, and there are then four additional little maps for Champions Royale, obviously. But those don't really count the same. I really do hope that we see Onslaught again in Zombies. That was so much fun, especially with all of these maps. That's a lot of content. I hope we see Onslaught Containment 2 on the Champions Hill maps, but so far there's been no announcement, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But yeah, on screen you can see the different skins that you can unlock for your character as you progress, which eventually will lead up to the gold skin. The fourth one kind of looks like a Chrome S skin. At launch, Vanguard's multiplayer will feature a free for all, a team deathmatch, a kill confirmed, a domination, a search and destroy, a hard point, and a patrol core and hardcore playlist, as well as tactical pacing options. There is not a Ryan's playlist at launch that might be coming in season one or later. At launch, there are seven assault rifles, six SMGs, four shotguns, four LMGs, three marksman rifles, three sniper rifles, five handguns, four launchers, two melee tools, 18 perks, six tactical pieces of equipment, and six lethal pieces of equipment. And all of that makes up 38 weapons at launch. Now, a while ago, 40 weapons were leaked, so there are two additional weapons we haven't seen. And these weapons are an assault rifle and a sniper, so they may be the weapons coming in season one, potentially. We will just have to wait and see, though. We have no confirmation. So by season one, with the three additional maps, with Shipment, there's literally going to be 20 core maps in total, with only three of them being remakes, or unless some of the season one maps are remakes too. The final thing I want to go over is that Sledgehammer Games have released the patch notes for the changes from beta to launch, and they've made a bunch. I will leave a link to their blog post in this video's description if you want to read all of the changes, but let's just go over the important changes they've posted on Twitter. So for visibility, weapon distortion effects have been removed, weather effects have been reduced, and they've nerfed the sun glares that a lot of people were complaining about. They have also added the ninja perk, allowing you to have silent footsteps all the time. People are very hyped for that, especially after we've seen in Modern Warfare and stuff, no ninja perk. Despite this, there is still going to be the dead silence field upgrades that you can use as well. People are very happy about that. That's one of the best changes. For the audio, audio received a complete overhaul. Yes, the footsteps are now more audible. In terms of the movement, sprint out times have been sped up. Incendiary is no longer slow movement speed and a cap has been placed on max suppression effects. For spawns, in unpredictable spawns in patrol has been fixed and spawn logic has been tuned globally. Sledgehammer games are the goats. They have literally listened to the community and made all of the changes we wanted. That's not even all of the changes. As we were saying, check out the blog if you want to know more. But yeah, in Call of Duty World War II, a lot of people didn't like it at, at launch and they eventually overhauled it completely later on to make it really good. And it seems like they have listened to the community and I really would love to see this continue in the seasons for Vanguard where they continue to listen to feedback and improve their game. Because at the end of the day, you need to have a good relations with your community to make sure you are doing the right things. And they have literally listened to us. What more could we ask for? For those people that say Call of Duty never listens to us, well, Sledgehammer Games are listening. Now, I understand that Infinity Ward probably are the worst devs in terms of listening to community feedback. Sledgehammer Games are the best though with Trek in between. And I would like to see this good work kept up in the future. Before the new Warzone map is introduced, there's going to be a special Operation Flashback, which is an encore for Verdansk, which begins on November the 18th. This is essentially just going to tell the history of Verdansk to celebrate and bring back its classic moments and many more. Ravensoft created a special Operation Flashback limited time mode featuring plenty of surprises that cover Verdansk's action-packed history. And for participating in the event, you will get two unique rewards, including an emblem and an animated calling card. And this is all for nostalgia purposes. So it's going to feature things from Verdansk 84, maybe Modern Warfare's Verdansk, 80s action heroes, the haunting events, and many more. You'll have different flashbacks from the different eras of Verdansk. Furthermore, there's going to be yet another event before the introduction of the new map where you will uncover intel on Caldera through Secrets of the Pacific starting on November the 24th. So as we prepare for the end of Verdansk, prepare to uncover more about the mysterious Caldera map by digging up Secrets of the Pacific. This limited time event is developed by Pinox and will grant you with vital information on Caldera and its various points of interest prior to its launch in December. But only if you complete challenges across Vanguard and Warzone. Each game will have its own set of tasks and rewards for completing them, such as acquiring and protecting Pacific artifacts while fighting 
to survive in Verdansk. So this event seems really interesting and this is all just about the lore and storyline of the new map and I think that's really good that they're fleshing out the storyline and filling us in on it. So it seems like when Verdansk goes, Verdansk is going to be destroyed again. We know that Verdansk was destroyed during the Cold War and was rebuilt after the Cold War to the version we see in Modern Warfare 2019. Just a quick reminder that you could check out Game Round down in this video's description to go ahead and get yourself some free games and accessories for playing them and you can also check out Felix Grey glasses in this video's description to get yourself some eye protection glasses which are very important for your eyesight's health. Anyways that's everything I wanted to go over in today's video. Thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways thank you for watching and uh, bye.